Okay, so I think this is the really fun part now. Um, I've got all this, the two little mama and baby giraffe ostriches, and then I've got the shadows there. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn them off for the time being. So I'm just clicking on the eyeballs and turning them off. Okay, I'm going to work on the backgrounds now. So what we're going to do with the background is transform this, and then we're going to use the tablets or the painting tools in Photoshop to kind of paint in our own backgrounds. So what we're going to do is kind of cut this background apart. So in order to do anything to the background, we have to unlock it. The background image always comes locked, so we have to unlock that. So click on the lock, it will unlock. And then I'm going to go ahead and I wonder if I can. This doesn't really work with that. I'm going to use the quick selection tool. It's right here. And then make sure it's on the plus. I'm going to make my brush a little bigger. And what I'm going to do is like kind of cut away the sky. So I'm just dragging on the sky and look, it clings right to the edge of the mountains. If it misses a spot like here, I can hold alt or go up to the minus here. And I can just. I usually just hold alt and like bump it back in so it doesn't miss that, but it really wouldn't matter that much. So I have the sky selected and since the mountains are jagged, I mean, usually what I do is I go to select and mask um, and I just kind of pull, I mean, I just pull the radius a little so it's a little more natural looking. I'm not even going to bother doing all the brush things because you can't really tell with the sky. Hit OK. All right, and then I'm just going to hit backspace, delete. And then I'm going to control D to deselect. And now I just have this blank background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm going to actually drag this layer behind. I have to kind of be careful here. Actually drag or the drag the land up. So I have a, like a layer sitting behind the sky. I want to keep it on its own layer. And I'm going to be adding lots of layers actually. So now gets the fun part. We're going to start painting here. So. You're going to go grab a paintbrush and then you have your colors over here. I just like to have this um, color tab open. If you don't see that, you can go to window and you can choose color. So I'm going to just start by filling in some colors here. So I'm going to pick some fun colors and I'm just going to make my brush really big. I don't use a tablet for everything, but this, it's fun to do the details. So I'm just going to kind of fill in a color. And then I love to do like lots of layers of color. So I just used a very soft brush. I can turn down my brush opacity and like choose lots of light kind of fuzzy. I have a soft brush, very faint co brush color. And I can go in and kind of click around and kind of add in some gradients. I could turn that up probably a little. This is to like, so I don't use my tablet for this part. I just use my mouse. But you see, I can like add in some cool kind of effects here. So this is all on one layer right now. You could be adding it to different layers as well. It's up to you. But it's not going to color over my mountains because it's on a layer behind. Um, so that's really fun. I can now though add another layer and do some other colors on top. So for instance, if I go now and I add some green, like that's on the, a different layer. So I could turn down the opacity of this layer if it's too much. And I could do, you know, I have more control over it. I could erase it because it's on its own layer. So one cool thing I want to show you is I've got the green on this layer. If I go up to filter, and honestly, you want to save a lot as you work. I haven't mentioned that, but like sometimes these higher functioning things could crash your computer. So real quick, I'm going to file, save as, and make sure you just call it like surreal. Put your name in there actually. And then this is my practice. Even as a Photoshop file, so all of your um, layers are there when you open it tomorrow. Okay, so I just saved it just in case this crashes when I do this, but I'm on the green layer. There's all these different filters up here. So filter, liquify is my one of my favorites. It's really cool. So up here, takes a second to load, liquify, if you do this, it'll kind of swirl. See, my brush is really big. You can change your brush size. And you can change a lot of the things over here, too, that might affect it. But this can be kind of cool for, like, creating a sky. See, it's kind of swirly. Um, so you're just going to go in and kind of add layers of paint. So very soft, fuzzy brushes 
are really cool. Um, if you take your tablet and you make sure that the pressure sensitivity is on, I'm going to use a harder brush now. And then I'm going to just go in and do some white and do a layer of stars. I like to do them on their own layer so I have full control. So I'm going to make my brush really tiny. And you know, stars are, I'm going to get 100%. Stars are kind of randomly clumped. I don't have a tablet with me right now. If I did, it'd be much more natural because you get like little ones and big ones. And right now mine are kind of all looking similar. So I'm just going to paint in some stars. You can go t -t 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 and like paint in a bunch. I'm just going to do a few for now. So I'm changing up the size, but you don't even have to do that if you have the pressure sensitivity on. So sometimes I'll like paint stars and then I'll select the layer. So you could grab this rectangle tool or control A just selects the whole thing. I'm going to copy and paste it because then like, oh, do I have it there? If I copy and paste it, it kind of pasted it in a weird spot. Um, You could, here we go. Oops, wrong one. It has trouble. I'm just going to move that out of the way for a sec. To get right on it. Like you could take this. You could um, control T. T. And then you could like flip it. So it's a little different. You could stretch it out. And like you could quickly copy and paste. I don't think you'll need to do that. Because you guys have so. You know your. Um, your tablets work pretty well. So if you've got layers there, you could do some layers of stars that are blurry to make them look in the distance with a soft brush, or you could take it and go to filter, blur, pause and blur, just blur out some of them so they look like they're in the distance. So you could really play that up. Um, and then the last thing is I like to do like a moon. So I'm gonna kind of come down here and add a new layer. And for the moon, as long as it's coming up behind the scene, I'm going to just do a brush and make it kind of a hard edge, so 100% hard. And then, I mean, whatever color you want to do, I'm going to do a little yellowish. I'm going to just use my brush at a really big size and create a moon texture here. Now I could do a soft brush now and do like a little bit brighter white kind of have it glow so it's kind of fun because you could add in the background some different glows too so I'm gonna add another layer here down here add a new layer and like you could have maybe I'll do a different color so you can see it better just some different glows coming behind the moon just make it really glowy you could take and add details like little speckles and things on the moon just keep adding more layers though because you don't want it to whoops you don't want, you want to be able to erase things without erasing like the background of the moon. So if I went here, watch this. There's these really cool brushes. So you've got lots of brushes. You don't just have to use a round brush. I could take one of these little speckly brushes and I could just make it kind of big and do like a little splatter or something. Um, or let's see this. You can go, let's do grayish. But you know, the moon has little spots. If it's on its own layer, now I can change the opacity and like turn it down. I can erase it if it goes off the moon or something and take it and get rid of that. Okay, so there's all those options. Um, I do have a cloud layer here and I just wanted to show you, like you could take it and grab a cloud, select and mask. And this wispy brush does amazing things. It gets rid of like the blue to so go through. You can even paint over on it and it kind of gets makes it transparent then so you could add in some clouds you could paint in some clouds so there's a cloud there I'm just gonna copy and paste it now it might have pasted way behind it pasted behind that so could be hanging there I can play with the opacity I can if I need to if it's the wrong color because it's a little bit gray I can go up to image and adjustments and just brighten just the cloud because I'm on the cloud layer I'm going to turn down the opacity some more so you can just add in all sorts of effects and colors and things like that
So now if I turn this all back on, it is starting to come together.